Hey all you cat cameras, do you place implants free-handed? And as a result, you only place the easy ones, the low-hanging fruit. Do you want to learn how to place more implants? Do you want to keep more of your implants in-house and prefer less of them? The answer to all of that is guided surgery. Guided surgery is awesome because it gives you a safety net and the predictability of a great and accurate placement. Let's say you want to place them guided but you don't want to do all the planning, or for that matter, you don't know how to plan them. We have the answer for you. If you want to have all the planning done for you and you want to focus just on the surgery, keep watching. I want to introduce you to True Abutment's UPIC service, where you get to pick how much or how little you allow True Abutment to help you. You can pick from a host of different services they provide. You can pick the surgical guide, if you want an implant, healing abutments, custom healers, final abutments, immediate provisionals, you pick what you want and they will send all of that to you in a box and you can go ahead and do the surgery. If you have any questions or comments after watching the video, leave them in the comments or you can reach out to me on Keep Cat Camming. I'll see you on the other side. So this is how the patient presented to my practice. Uh, he was missing the lateral incisors number 7 and 10. Both the spaces were quite narrow and tight as you can see in these pictures and I decided that guided surgery would be the optimal way to place implants with precision here. So the CBCT and the STLs of the intraoral scans were uploaded on True Abutments portal and within a couple days I had a video call with the designer about the placement of the implants. Two 3.5 millimeter by 11.5 millimeter implants were designed for sites number 7 and 10 and I liked everything about the case so I gave my okay to the case and we moved on. So with True Abutment's UPIC system, you get to pick what you want for a particular case. Uh, you can pick from a variety of different options. Obviously, you're going to get your implants, a surgical guide. You can pick between healing abutments, custom abutments, custom healers, screw retained crowns. Uh, you pick whatever you'd like. In this case, I picked the implants. I picked uh, just regular healing abutments and obviously the surgical guides. So all of that was sent to me in a box and we were ready to rock and roll. So here is the surgical guide drilling protocol that was recommended for both the osteotomies and the surgical protocol was exactly the same. In this particular case, uh, owing to the narrow space for both uh, number 7 and number 10, it was recommended that I use the narrow pylon kit uh, and as you can see we we're going to start with the tissue punch flat drill the 2.0 2.6 millimeter drill followed by 11 and a half 2 millimeters 8.5 and 11.5 3 millimeter drills and finally the 3.4 millimeter drill here is uh, the narrow pylon kit from true abutment which I ended up using for the surgery Next, the patient was anesthetized for the implant surgery on both the surgical sites, number 7 and 10 with local infiltration. As you can see, these sites were extremely narrow and this is exactly the reason why we opted to go with uh, guided surgery so we can place both these implants with absolute precision. We next tested the fit of the surgical guide and there was no rocking whatsoever. Uh, the guide was super stable and we were ready for the surgery. So step one in the surgical protocol was to use a tissue punch for both the osteotomies and here I just finished the tissue punch on surgical site number seven and then I'm following that up on uh, surgical site number ten. Once the tissue punch was done, the guide was removed off the teeth and we removed the, the tissue punches. 
uh, with a curette and some cotton pliers. Uh, there goes number seven. And we followed that on number 10 as well. We just wanted to ensure all that tissue doesn't get pushed into the osteotomies and we keep the surgical site free of any, any tissue particles. Step two after the tissue punches in the surgical protocol was to use a flat drill. Again, the exact same protocol for both the steotomies for number seven and 10. And as you can see, the flat drill needs to be used up to that black mark on the drill. And that's what I did for both the steotomies. Uh, it is super important uh, to keep irrigating the sites and keeping the steotomies uh, free of any bone particles or tissue tags. Step three here was to use the two millimeter path drill. Again, exactly the same drill on both the steotomies. As you can see, this is super easy. Guided surgery can be very predictable once you have a plan in place. And here I am finishing up the same drill on both the surgical sites, number seven and 10. Step four in the surgical protocol was to use a 2.6 millimeter path drill on both the sites. Again, uh, make sure you're doing a pumping action and irrigating the sites all at the same time. I'm having to move the handpiece here just to make way for the drill. Um, again, I'm gonna keep irrigating the sites by removing the surgical guide and making sure my sites are debris free. Step number five is the two millimeter by 11 and a half millimeter drill on both sides here I do it on number seven and on number 10 as you can see these uh, guides are rock solid they don't move I'm holding it with my fingers to make sure that they're stable and after every drilling protocol I go in there or my assistant goes in there and irrigates those sites the next step is to use the three millimeter by 8.5 millimeter drill on both the sides as it has been discussed in the surgical protocol. Um, super easy, uh, just make sure that the, dry, the, the drill goes in all the way to the stop. There is no way you can go any further than the stop, which is gonna be very safe. You're not gonna hit the adjacent teeth or the roots and you're not gonna, any, you're not gonna go any deeper than it was planned. Uh, again, keep irrigating the surgical sites. Step seven is the three millimeter by 11 and a half millimeter drill on both the sides. Again, I want to make sure that you all understand that uh, these drills have stops and it won't allow you to go any further than what it was designed for. Again, after both the drills are completed, uh, irrigate the sites, keep it clean. In this particular case, I had a choice depending on the quality of the bone, uh, which was not super hard. I decided to stay within the normal bone protocol and I stopped at that last surgical drill. I did not use the other drill that was recommended for the hard bone. Once the osteotomies were completed, uh, we proceeded to place two urus omni implants, which were 3.5 by 11 and a half millimeters in length each. Now the protocol, it was suggested that with the, uh, with the handpiece driver, I should not go any more than 10, 10 millimeters to uh, potentially uh, avoid any, any warping on the sleeve. So there I stop at the 10 millimeter mark and uh, next I'm gonna pick up the implant for number 10, exactly the same implant. Again, I'm gonna go in there and uh, place the implant through the guide. This protocol is completely guided. And as you can see, I'm gonna stop at that first black mark, which is a 10 millimeter mark. I'm starting to get about a 45 Newton centimeter at this point and uh, once I'm done, I follow it up with the hand driver. And uh, by the time I was done, I almost got up to a, a 60 Newton centimeter uh, on number seven. And I believe about a 65 on uh, number 10. So there I'm going slowly at the very end, making sure that uh, 
I can go at the depth it was planned. Here I'm removing the driver and I'm gonna follow up the exact same protocol of hand driving the remaining of the implant uh, with the torque wrench. Again, slow and steady, a quarter turn at a time. Now these implants can also be perfectly timed, meaning if you had chosen to place either custom healers or uh, custom healing abutments or even final custom abutments with screw retained crowns, um, you can do that and True Abutment can uh, go ahead and fabricate all of those for you before the surgery. But in this case, that's not what I wanted because my final plan is to not just restore the implants, but also change the crowns on eight and nine. So I'm gonna opt to do all of them at a later date once the implants have completely integrated. So once the implants were placed, uh, the the surgical guide was removed and here I'm placing the healing abutments uh, on the narrow uris uh, uh, implants from True Abutment. As you can see, this was a very stress-free, productive and predictable appointment. Now if you are an office that do not have the means to make surgical guides, do not have a 3D printer or don't have the ambition to design all these cases on your own or plan them. Um, you know, go ahead and give them out to a service like True Abutment or for that matter, any lab of your choice and let them design it for you and you can focus on the surgery itself. Uh, True Abutment has a full suite of services and you can pick whatever you want uh, from the menu. Um, you can pick implants, surgical guides, healing abutment, uh, screw retain crowns and all of this can be perfectly done even before the surgery. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a great service and if you haven't looked into it, you should definitely look into it. Here it is, the final stapulate that was placed as a temporary prosthesis after the surgery was done. We're gonna wait about four months for the healing and the integration of the implants. And then the plan is to uh, restore number seven and 10 with uh, custom abutments and crowns and number eight and nine with new crowns as well. Hope you all enjoyed this video and keep cat camming.